Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are in Machakos County, Kithini village and we are visiting a farmer who's combined efforts to make sure they reap from farming. They have each picked roles which they are best at. They are celebrated by the local universities and part of their shamba is used as a demonstration farm. In their shamba, you're going to find beekeeping, you're going to find fish farming, livestock. Tony, speaking of livestock farming, did you know that our farmer's cow was once voted the best in the Machakos SK show? Indeed it was. Well, Carol, let's go meet them. Let's go. My name is Margaret Nginamusau. I have been a farmer for the last 10 years. My name's uh, Jacob Bombua. I've been farming for 10 years. I think it's here. Ah, here they are. Yes. Jacob. Yes. Ah, Maggie, there you are. Welcome, yes. welcome. How is it going? Good. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. What, yes. What's happening here? This is our little nursery. Jacob, has it been easy to set up all this in the in Ukambani climate? Uh, farming is not that easy. Mm -hmm. You ought to have a passion in farming. Passion for farming. farming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, farming is also progressive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, this is, I can say this is my latest uh, project okay. in the farm. Uh -huh. Which yeah. means you have other projects yes, in the Shamba. Yes. yes. Can we see them? Yes, yes you can see them. Let's go, let's can go. Let's that go, that go have a look. All right. Jacob and Margaret took us to tour their farm. And look at those oranges, mangoes, avocados, and dairy cows. Amazing, right, Carol? Yes. It was my dream uh, for one day to see the Shamba Shepherd. But I said I'll never call them to invite them at my farm. But they'll search for me because of what I've done. And that is a dream come true. Let's pitch the tent first. Jacob is very passionate about dairy farming. My biggest achievement is when I participated in SK Show and my cows, the overall champion, came from my farm and also the second runners up. He has 12 dairy cows, with five cows giving him 90 liters of milk per day. He has planted bracaria grass, napier, Caliandra and boma roots to ensure that he has enough feeds for his cows. But as the climate gets warmer, farmers are facing new pests and diseases. Cows have late heat cycles and are giving less milk. We have invited Vala from Machakos County to come and share how farmers can adapt to these changes. Jacob, yes. how has climate change affected fodder and your cow's milk production? Sometimes you find you can plant fodder, like for the boma rods. And uh, after planting, waiting for another rain doesn't come. So it ends up uh, uh, being dry. Mm -hmm. So we have that big problem of getting not enough rains at the moment, and also uh, extreme heat on the farm level. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And do you agree with his sentiments? I agree with his sentiment fully. When the temperatures are high, the animals may not feed a lot. And when they feed little, it means that they don't feed enough for milk production. Again also, uh, in terms of uh, showing the signs of it, you need the animal to feed well and quality feed. I had experience of uh, at least three cows, whereby I had to put AI uh, more than three times for the cow to get pregnant. 
Sometimes you can stay with the cow thinking it is in calf. After four months, you see it now. Nothing. Uh, yeah, there's nothing. The solution to that is uh, early uh, pregnancy detection. You seek uh, expert advice so that they can detect your animal whether it is pregnant or not. So that uh, you don't waste time thinking the animal is pregnant and it's not. And then it can be served on time. Also you can be advised on other issues that are making the animals not uh, show signs of retalia. And that is where now you normally tell farmers, we move from depending on rains. We start harvesting water, we have uh, dams, where when the rain is gone, we can irrigate our grass and then harvest the grass and uh, conserve it to be used when the dry seasons are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask for advice, get a grass that is suitable for your area. And then you also have it that's grass in the right stage and then conserve it. Yes. Yeah. Where do you sell your milk, Jacob? We have our own dairy where I normally take and I also have an outlet where I also uh, take some of the milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Machakos town. Wow. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what should farmers do to make sure they get good prices for their milk? Uh, farmers should uh, form marketing groups where they can sell milk together. They can also do contract farming with uh, the cooperatives that are selling milk. They should also do what we call value addition. How do you transport your milk? The, the can. The, ah, the can, yes. the milk can. Milk can. Uh -huh. yes. Is that a good practice, yes, using milk cans? A very good one. Mm. Uh, first, because uh, that can, is, it can clean the can well. It is not like plastic. Most of the people are not able to wash it well, but with the can you will be able to wash it with clean water and put it to dry. Use aluminium cans to transport your milk because it's easy to clean and also does not contaminate milk like plastics. Remember, good management of the cows will help you maximize on milk production. Make sure your dairy cows have enough quality feeds, clean drinking water, and vaccinate your cows accordingly. As we face climate change, adapt strategies such as fodder production and feed conservation to ensure feed availability, use of drought-tolerant grass varieties, rearing improved breeds, use of AI, collective marketing, use of simple treatment methods such as deworming, dehorning, and hoof trimming, and use of water bath for cooling milk, use of charcoal and firewood as energy sources for boiling milk. Well, managed manure from your livestock can be useful to your farm. But how does Jacob manage his manure? We've invited Jesse from the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI, to find out whether Jacob is on the right track. So, Jacob, how do you manage your manure? I normally sweep my manure on a daily basis from my cows and uh, I heap uh, the manure as you can see mm -hmm. behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. I normally wait till it is dry. To be dry? Then I transfer. And when you transfer, where do you take it? I normally take to my shamba uh, on the fruits mm -hmm. and also uh, the place where I do plant uh, mains mm -hmm. and beans. All right. Yeah. Okay. Jesse, yes. you've heard what our farmer does. Yes. How is it done? Is our farmer doing a good job? Uh, well, I can say he's trying. Mm -hmm. He's doing a good job, mm -hmm. apart from a few things here and there that we are going to point out. Mm -hmm. I can see he has a lot of manure, which mm -hmm. is very good. It's uh, one of the benefits of uh, keeping livestock. Uh, but uh, this manure has to be well managed for it to uh, be of beneficial to him. We want to conserve as much nutrients that is in that manure as possible mm -hmm. so that we can take it to the farm and uh, so that the nutrients can be used by the crops. Eh? So one of the most important things uh, uh, you should do to make sure that your manure is uh, uh, well managed is to make sure that your animals are confined on a shed that is roofed to protect both the animals and the manure from uh, rain and the sun and uh, we recommend that the floor should be cemented for ease of cleaning that shed mm -hmm. and removing the, the manure. Because 
Manure is both the dung and the urine. So if your floor is not cemented, you may be able to collect the dung, but you'll not be able to collect the urine. Urine will reach into the soil, mm -hmm. which is rich in nutrients. If you are not able to cement your floor, then at least you should have beddings on the cow shed mm. so that uh, the beddings are going to soak the urine and you'll be able to remove it together with the dung. So the next step is where do you put that manure immediately? This manure should be heaped also on either a concrete floor or on a polythene mm. because we are trying to avoid uh, that urine to go away or to get lost into the soil. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you cover that manure. Like now I've seen uh, uh, the manure is uh, left open. Mm -hmm. So when it rains, the rain will uh, go away with the nutrients, mm -hmm. the very important nutrients that you need. Remember, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, nutrient is N, all nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And nitrogen volatilizes all uh, to the to air, it to evaporate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's also important to compact that manure when you are storing it or you are keeping it there. Mm -hmm. Remember to wear protective gear. That's gumboots, a dust coat and gloves when handling manure. Use a shovel with a long handle and clean your hands with water and soap after to stop spreading diseases. Either you can heap it like this or you can construct a simple shed. You can do a structure with a concrete floor and uh, iron sheet roof or you can do uh, a structure and then put polythene mm. on the crowd but make sure that polythene doesn't have holes because we want to avoid any uh, nutrients going into the soil and then the roofing you can uh, still do polythene or even you can do grass mm. uh, like the grass that uh, roof you see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so th those two can do Remember you are cleaning your shed every day yes. or twice a day yes. as recommended. Eh? So every time you clean your shed, so you adding new uh, fresh dung. So you just come to uh, the heap that you left yesterday, add the fresh one, make sure you complete it well with just your shovel like that mm -hmm. and then cover it again until the time now you are ready to use it or when it is needed for example planting this mm -hmm. so you are storing it for the coming season of planting mm -hmm. so that is when you just take your manure and take it to the farm mm -hmm. yes you can use manure on your napier grass every time you harvest it and when you're planting crops like maize Wait for one and a half months before you can use your manure and start from the old manure. Climate change is here with us, but you can still be a very successful farmer. Oh yes, and with good management of your manure, you can be guaranteed of maximum yield. See you to come after the break. We want to find out about biodiversity and why financial literacy is important for every farmer. See you later. Welcome to the Shamba Shepherd Farming News for Kenya. There is still very little rain expected in Kenya, especially in the eastern part of the country. In the coming week, most areas of the country will be dry or expect less rains of 5 mm. From Marsabit to Mandera, Garissa to Tana River, Isiolo to Kitui, Makueni to Kajiado. Most parts of the coastal region will get little rains of up to 25 mm. This includes Kilifi, Kwale and Mombasa. Some parts of Taita, Taveta and Lamu will have no rains or little rains of less than 5 mm. Meru and Tharaka Nidhi expect little to moderate amount of rains of up to 50 mm. Other parts of central Kenya will see moderate to high rainfall ranging from 20 mm to 145 mm. Lekipia and Nyandarwa will get high rainfalls of up to 145 mm. Moranga, Kerenyaga and Embu will have little rains of less than 15 mm. Nyeri will receive moderate amount of rain of up to 50 mm. Nairobi, Machakos and Kiambu will see no rains or very little rains of less than 5 mm. North Rift, 
Central Rift and South Rift Valley will get little to high rainfall ranging from 5 to 145 mm. West Pokot, Transoea, Marraquet, Wasingishu, Nandi, Baringo and Kericho will receive high rainfall of up to 145 mm. Samburu, Nakuru and Bomet will get little to high rainfall ranging from 15 to 145 mm. Trukana and Narok will see little to moderate rains ranging from 5 to 50 mm. The western region expect moderate to high rainfall ranging from 25 to 145 mm. This includes Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega and Vihiga. Finally, the Nyanza region will receive little to moderate rains ranging from 25 to 50 mm. This includes Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Miguri, Kisi and Nyamira. Farmers, the cold and wet weather we are experiencing may lead to fungal diseases like blight in tomatoes and potatoes. Scout your farm daily and prevent an attack by using recommended fungicides. Farmers, what feeds are you giving your livestock? Consider planting high-protein fodder like Desmodium, Lucerne, among others in the coming short rains. Handle your grains well to avoid post-harvest losses. Store them when they are fully dry to avoid aflatoxins and use hematic bags to store them as they are airtight and no pests can survive. If you are using storage chemicals, do not use them on grains that you will use within 3 months. For more farming tips and information, get in touch with I Shamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Machakos County and we are visiting Margaret and Jacob. We have seen how climate change has affected dairy farming and how to manage manure. But we also want to find out about biodiversity and why financial literacy is important for every farmer. Let's get back to work. Back to work. <laughs> Very nice avocados. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Now, did you have uh, beehives in your shamba? Yes. How many? I started with one. What are you keeping bees for? For honey. How about pollination? Mm -hmm. <laughs> never thought about okay, that. let yeah, me show yeah. you a farmer who is doing that. Yeah, okay. And you get to learn more. Okay. We are visiting Duncan at a farm where biodiversity is practiced to help avocado trees grow more and better fruits. Duncan. Yes, Tony. What is biodiversity? It's what's around the human being. You like, talk about the animals, the water bodies, talk about the plants, and also the insects. Insects that surround yes, us. That surround us. So when we look around here, are you seeing a good, good example of biodiversity? Indeed. Indeed. As you can see, we have beehives. When we talk about pollinators, we have a number of pollinators. We have bees, we have butterflies, and other beneficial insects that help us to pollinate our crops. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, avocados. We are the biggest exporter in the country yes. and also very nutritive fruits. Yes. Avocado require pollinators for them to produce fruit. So bees are not just good for honey, is it? Yeah, it's not about honey. For them to develop honey, there is the most important thing they do to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And this is pollination of the food. Remember, 80% of our crop species depend on pollinators for them to manufacture food. And this is the food now the human being consume. And the food needs to be nutritious. So, so without the pollinators, it means that we have no food as a human now, less. <gasps> and that means really? we're going to extinct. No food? No food and we'll always, we'll, we'll die, all of us. So we shouldn't kill the bees? Yes, we should take care of them. Pollination is important for fruit and seed formation. Pollen is carried by a pollinator such as bees from one flower to another. The fertilized flower later yields fruit and seeds. What do you recommend farmers do to attract the pollinators? So basically when the farmers they are going about their business of farming, they need also to take care of pollinators by planting uh, some clovers, and these are like flowers indigenously found in our ecosystem, just to maintain the population of these pollinators or to give them a habitat to live in. So when they are foraging, they are also doing the pollination part of it for their crops. Wow. And looking at uh, where we are now, 
you have a water body, you can see the pollinators can access to water. They have flowers to foliage, and that mm -hmm. means that uh, they are able just to move um, and pollinate other crops like uh, avocados you were talking about, ah. which is very important. So where these indigenous flowers are, is advisable to put um, some water. Exactly. Can we have a look at an avocado that has been pollinated by the bees and the pollinators to see how they look like? Actually, I'll uh, take you to the field and we'll see an example. Let's go have a look. Good. Wow, Duncan, yes, beautiful, Tony. beautiful avocado trees. Indeed, indeed, as but, you can but, see. Yeah, but let me ask, why are we walking on grass? This is a shamba. Uh, the grass uh, that has been planted in between the avocados is part of that biodiversity. In this case, we are looking at the soils. It's very important to take care of our soils. Talk about soil lotion. So when it rains, you find like most topsoil, uh, it's colored away by the water. So in yes. this case, there will be no soil lotion. Another thing we have to take care of soil microorganisms. The other the small yeah insects found in the soil mm. or organisms found in the soil. The worms, and the all worms, that. all that. There's a lot of activity under here going exactly. on. Exactly, and right. that's what you always will make our soil to be, you know, very uh, rich in yeah. terms of nutrient yes. to take care or to support these kind of avocados that you can see. Wow, and they look good. Look at indeed, that. Look indeed. at that. They are so beautiful. So is this what you are talking about? Exactly. So when mm -hmm. we take care of uh, the soils and we take care of the pollinators, this is the kind of fruit we get. This is a result. These are the results. You can see the quality and the quantity of the fruit yes. per given tree. They're so clean, mm -hmm. so healthy, and so big. So biodiversity is everywhere around biodiversity us. Biodiversity is part of us. And if you take care of it? It will take care of us. It will take care of us. Indeed. And you're going to get good quality products like, like this avocado. Yes. Indeed. Thank you so much, Duncan. Welcome. Pollinators such as bees and birds are important both for plants and humans too. It is up to us to take care of our environment so that we can benefit from it too. After showing Margaret the pollination video, she was very interested to have more bees in her farm. And that's why we've invited Cecilia, a financial expert, to help her on how she can finance extra beehives. Financial literacy is important because it helps farmers understand the business side of farming. And this helps them expand their agribusiness and exploit on profits. You're, you're in agribusiness, so definitely you must be selling some of your crops. How do you go about it? How do you do your savings? From my sales, I usually have some amount to keep in my bank account. I also set some more account to plow back into the farm. I need to pump my water from my dam up. So I need to buy diesel. I also need to buy pesticides. And I need labor for my shamba. Mm -hmm. So I need to get money, I need to use the money I have saved to upgrade my shop. Uh -huh. Where do you get information on farming and financial literacy? I get my information from the internet. I Google, I get the current information on how to run my farm. I also have, I attend seminars on farming. And then I also have resource people who come along and do educators on how to do better farming and agribusiness. Right. So, Cecilia, yes. what is the importance of financial literacy? Okay, first, the importance of financial literacy is for farmers to do a proper planning and budgeting. The, it also helps one to do savings. Mm -hmm. It also helps in business expansion. A farmer will be able to know how to expand the business. Also, on the farmer will be able to acquire the required assets for modern farming. It's also good for farmers to do a proper record keeping on whatever activities they are doing. Let's say, for example, you want to add two more hives. Yeah. How would you go about that? So I would have to visit a financial institution for backup. All right. Yes. Cecilia. Yes. 
<coughs> how can we help Maggie? How will we go about that? Okay, that is where now financial literacy comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will get the capital and the finances. Yeah. Then after getting, how will you pay? Yeah. Well, first you have to know the two, the additional two beehives, what will they be bringing in? Okay. Yes, then from there, now you are able to know, I can go to a financial institution mm -hmm. and get these finances. Mm -hmm. I can go to my savings and get this. Then after some time, I can return back the savings or I'll be able to repay the loan I've gotten for that financing. Margaret will need 20,000 Kenya shillings to get the four beehives. She has 6,000 Kenya shillings in her savings, meaning she needs 14,000 Kenyan shillings to buy the hives. And because she has saving records, it's easier for the bank to give her the loan. Take a loan only when it's necessary and plan ahead on how you will repay your loan. Do not divert the funds given as loan to something else. If possible, get the input loan. For example, in Margaret's case, she will get the beehives instead of getting the money. Do you think it's wise to all, for a farmer to always be going back, going always when they have a need to walk into a bank and get a loan? No. Do you think that is wise? No, that is not wise at all as a financial institution and wise. That is not good. First, you have to begin. Let's say if you want to do an expansion, you have to do your records as I've said. Mm -hmm. You understand if from the records and whatever you've gotten, whether you can be able to plow back the business. Now at that point, if from your savings you are not able, now that is where you go ahead and get a financial assistance. We also have agribusiness experts in our institution. They visit the farmers. We also give the necessary knowledge our farmers are supposed to be given. We have those experts from the agriculture department with us. That's encouraging. I think now I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah. All right. Cecilia came with two beehives to help Margaret and Jacob continue with beekeeping, both for the honey and for pollination of their fruits. And here they are. Kamau will have carefully set them ready for the bees. So, whatever has a beginning must have an end. Yes. We've come to the end of our shape up for today. Mm -hmm. So we don't know whether the shape up was successful, whether it was good. Let's start with you, Margaret. How did you find the shape up? It was great. I want to thank you and say thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to be with us. Thank you for the knowledge you, you've imparted on us. And come again and again, mm -hmm. Asante. We All appreciate, right. we appreciate. Mm -hmm. Who is a young man? I didn't see you. What's your name? Manu. 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 Ah, good. <laughs> good, good. Jacob? Yeah. How did you find the shape up? Uh, to me, uh, this is a dream, Hansel. And uh, I've been praying maybe one time you people pass by. Okay. So I think uh, you came with what I wanted. In fact, you corrected me on the areas of manure uh, management and also uh, uh, in some areas of maybe my animal, uh, peer management. Nice. So, most welcome. Mm. So when you come again, you're going to find huge improvements. Yes, mm -hmm. I promise. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. So, everything has been answered. Yeah. I think our work here is done. Okay. So, nice. we'll see you next time. We'll All right? Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Keep it up. Well done. All right. Manu. Manu. Bye. Work hard. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. But now I don't miss uh, my employment. In fact, uh, I can say I'm paid by my farm three times what I, would, I was used to be paid. So I love to improve even uh, further. I'll get the salary my CEO is getting where I was used to work. <laughs> Thank you.